I am here in the Ozarks again, about five hours north-ish of where I live in Dallas, and I am here testing out the newest pack from Meandry Maker. That's me. This is the three-day pack, so called because if you were so inclined, it's got enough room and it's comfortable enough that you could do three nights in this pack. So um, I've packed it completely. Um, just to test out the weight, how it feels, how it walks. I've been walking for about 45 minutes here on this trail. Um, I kind of stepped off the trail, found a spot to film. Um, so um, I am actually not staying the night, unfortunately. I'm just kind of out here filming, but this is packed such that um, as if I was staying. So uh, let me walk you through it. So on the top is my 10 degree Fahrenheit sleeping bag in my stuff sack. And I've got this lashed to the top. I like that because this is a down sleeping bag and though this is a pretty tough, this is a Sea to Summit um, stuff sack, it's waterproof, so uh, compression sack. So I really like this because it protects the sleeping bag, but just in case, I don't like to put it on the bottom, so I strap that to the top. Um, sorry, I don't have matching straps. <laughs> these are from uh, my other day pack, so. Um, but these are one inch tabs and one inch straps. There's two of these guys at the top here. I'll do some close-ups. Um, and those are right there on the top. And then on the bottom, I have, and I ran out of straps, so I used the belt. Um, but on the bottom, I've got my underquilt. Now, I am a hammock camper, and this is a pain in the neck. These things are giant. They're just about the size of a sleeping bag. And that's annoying, but um, if you strap it to the bottom, then you still got plenty of room inside the pack. I'm gonna show you just how much room, but um, it's like 75 degrees today, and so this is spring, and eventually I won't need this. This is a shoulder season, um, but if you are a hammock camper and you need one of these guys that straps to the bottom, just fine. On the bottom of the pack are four tabs. Um, I am a huge fan of tabs on the bottom, or really anywhere they can go, and you'll notice that the bottom of this pack is flat. And that's on purpose for this exact reason. One, so that it sits flat, so when you're setting it down, it doesn't tend to lean over, but also so that you've got lots of surface area. So if you need to put something big on there, like a big wool blanket or a wool blanket with other stuff rolled in it, you could put a lot on the bottom of this pack. Um, you'll also notice, or I think you'll notice anyway, that these are, um, these are oriented square. Whereas the ones at the top here are oriented um, diamond shape. And I did that specifically because on the bottom, when you've got all your stuff in your pack, these are a little bit harder to get the straps through. So, and when they are um, oriented like a diamond, it's a little bit harder to get through. You have a little bit less room to give. So um, I kind of made this, uh, I put these in a diamond shape on one of the most, on another recent pack I made and um, kind of learned that lesson. So these are very deliberately oriented like a square, whereas these are diamond. Um, this, uh, this pack also, one of the things that I've, this is the new um, addition to my packs here, this handle. Um, I, um, I did a different kind of handle on some recent packs and um, made the mistake of not putting leather on the underside of the lid here, and I'll show you all that here in a second, but um, this is 6.7 Veg Tan leather, um, and it's riveted, and I have been deliberately yanking on this thing um, just to make sure that it holds, 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 and uh, and it does. It holds tough, so, because um, I really like to hang my packs, you know, on a tree or whatever to get to stuff, so I want to make sure there was a handle that would really hold up to um, some abuse. So, all right, let's see what's on the inside. So, big flap by the way, and I do that because, a couple things, one, so there's a zipper, so let's not quite get all the way inside first. 
So there's a zipper here, and this is a 10 inch zipper, and in it, I've got my maps, I've got my moleskin notebook in which I have the design for this pack and all kinds of other good stuff, and I've got a compass, and I think that's it, but this is 10 inches by 10 inches, so it's very deep and uh, very wide, and uh, it's got this great, so I got this zipper in this zipper pull from buckleguy.com. I talk about those guys all the time. This is a solid brass zipper. It's just really cool, kind of distinctive. So you can put a lot in here. And again, I have this completely stuffed, but there's still plenty of room to get stuff in here. Um, so there's a zipper pocket. Okay, so um, so big. that's one of the reasons for the big flap is to go over this zipper. And um, I can tell you certainly from recent experience, if you want to get something out of the zipper pocket, yeah, you've got to undo these straps and get to it. But it also is super protected, so it's kind of worth it. I also make these flaps really big because if you packed this completely, and I haven't, it's, there's still room here, but if this was completely, completely, completely full, then it would be this wide. And if that were the case, then your flap would need to still come over the top of the pack and then down the front and cover that zipper. So if this was literally full to the point where all you could do was pull it tight enough to be the shape of the pack, you'd still have plenty of flap room. Okay, so what's on the inside? I've got a couple little Sargento balance brake snacks. I love these. This is neat. This is cheese and nuts. These are great. I just throw these in the truck, throw these in my pack. They're great. My wife gets these for me. She's the greatest. I've got my first aid kit. I've got an extra little strap here. I've got my work gloves. And I've got a plastic bag, apparently, with a couple extra O-rings for my uh, my um, my Sawyer water filter because the last one kind of went kablooey. Got my saw in here. Got my sit pad. And here is a pro tip. You probably know this, but. If you are using a pack like this, right, sort of old school wax canvas, um, if you put this in the back, if it's the first thing you put in, then it creates a little bit of structure and it gives you a really nice soft backing. So I do that every time. So, and you know, these are great, incredibly useful things anyway, um, but great for giving structure to the pack. So, um, so here's, <laughs> here's a little surprise for you. So how do you know that this pack has a ton of room in it. It has another pack inside it. That's right, so this is my Bushcraft Day Pack, and I'm gonna do another video about this. This is the 2.0 version. This is the newer version in uh, Sage Wax Canvas, but I literally could not fill this enough for this hike. Um, so the reason, actually, the secret is the reason I put my, um, my under quilt on the bottom is because I stuffed this inside. So this is a whole other pack pack, a whole other pack, day pack that I put inside this pack. So that should tell you something. That's a pretty big beefy piece of gear that went inside this pack. But wait, there's more. Handy dandy Stanley flask. This is a great flask. I've got my possible pouch. In it, I've got some baby wipes, some cordage, got all my fire kit, got my trusty knots pamphlet. I love this. I'm sure you have one of these. If you don't, you should get one. Um, so anyway, meandering maker, wax canvas, possible pouch, inflatable pillow, sea to summit, super comfortable. My, um, I haven't tried this yet. So this is the, the you know, um, sub six, sub six hammock. It's super light. I know that, you know, it's not a DD Hemix, it's not, I'm sure that there's you have plenty to say about e and um, Probably because, unfortunately, their marketing is mostly millennials, you know, on the beach in these things, but I think they're great. But this one's super duper duper light, so I haven't tried it yet, but I wanted to throw it in here just to kind of see what that was all about. And then I've got my um, AquaQuest, AquaQuest tarp. I've used this several times. Love this tarp. I actually have a lighter version of this, but I wanted to bring the heavier one. Um, so that's everything that was on the inside of this pack. Um, so, oh, no, that's not true. Also my straps, um, and uh, these are the Atlas straps for the ENO system. Um, you can get lighter stuff, 
spot. I really like these because they're easy to use. Anyway, so all this stuff, including a whole other pack inside this pack. Okay, so on the outside, so this is one of the things I'm most excited about about this pack. Um, let's start on this side, is these pockets. So when I designed this pack, I literally started from the pockets because, you know, in this pack, there's this giant zipper pocket on the outside. I think it's like 11 inches wide and four inches deep and are like 10 inches tall. Um, so this is definitely a, I want to get stuff out of it really easily kind of pack. But this one, because I wanted a really minimalist front, um, I still wanted to be able to um, be able to get to whatever you needed to on the outside without having to get into the pack. And I still wanted to uh, leave as much room as possible inside the pack. So these pockets kind of over-engineered. So um, a couple things. So unlike this guy, which is these just cinch clothes, so they don't have a top. These have a strap that goes over top of them. They are 11 inches tall and they are five inches deep and five inches wide. They are gigantic. So in it, I have a smaller possible pouch. I've got my headlamp and my phone charger and a couple extra batteries. And then, and this was, this was literally, I built, I designed this for myself for this purpose. This is my Snow Peak 900. And within that is my Bush Buddy. So I've got that and um, then my spork in there. Um, and if you have any experience with these Snow Peak 900s, you know that the lid, um, which is also a little frying pan, doesn't fit on here at all. It doesn't stay. So I threw it in this canvas stuff sack that I made. Um, so anyway, this was specifically designed, these pockets, to be big enough to hold this because, as you can imagine, that takes a ton of room inside a pack. And I want to take up all that room. In fact, when I... Uh, did an overnighter with the last iteration of this pack. This went inside here and it took up like, you know, a quarter of the room. So I was like, I want something where I can put this on the outside. But you notice that it was, it still is this pocket tall enough that I was able to put a whole other possible pouch on top of it. And then on the outside of this pocket is a little slip pocket here. And so on the other side, I've got my Grandford's Brook Small Forest Axe. And then um, I have lashed to the side, old school style, um, a little stoneware mug. And then my Sawyer squeeze system and a giant 40 ounce, 40 ounce, 150 milliliter, if that's your thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's 40 ounce um, water bottle also specifically designed to make sure that could go there and then on the outside i've got just kind of some fixings for some coffee and um some meds just for the day and um so then on the sides so this was also something i really was psyched to try on this pack um is this paracord lashing so there are these little brass o-rings um these are also from buckleguy.com and they are attached, they're sewn into the seams of the pack, and they are leather. So the, the little pieces that these O-rings attach to are leather on a lot of packs. These are, um, are twill cotton, um, which is fine. It's strong, um, but leather is just a little bit cooler, um, and will, it will last, and it will hold strong. Um, and again, it's sewn into the seams of the pack. Um, so I put paracord on these, so if you order one of these, you'll get paracord and a cinch. Um, but you can take that off. I just melted the ends together, but you can take that off and um, Hang stuff from it do whatever you want, but what I like about it. Well, it's got several uses one So if you've got something down inside of it um, Then you can cinch it closed because One of the things that I noticed when I was testing this pack um, so the thing of note actually is both this pack and this pack um, the inside the back side of the pocket goes all the way through so it, it sews to the pack on the sides but then you can slip something behind it on both sides and that's great but what i noticed on this pack is that once you put something down in there and you let it hang from the pocket well that's fine but i was using my 26 inch kisa the last time i went um, on an overnighter and it hangs way down so whereas with this since it straps all the way to the very top of the pack, 
you can cinch it up and it'll hold it higher up. Um, but it also, once the pack is filled um, and you want to kind of tighten everything up, you can pull this and it cinches the pack tight too. So it's got a couple, couple uses there. Um, the top is just like the day pack here, is just cinched closed. I, I really like that. Um, there are some packs that have flaps that go over the top and then there's another flap and that's totally cool. I don't, haven't really done that yet. Um, but just to be able to have this drawstring, man, this is the greatest because you can, you can fill it and if it's completely open um, and you need to just go this tight, great. You need to cinch it closed all the way, then that works great too. So it's just, it's super flexible. Um, I'm gonna do some close-ups here, but the inside of this pack is gigantic. Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> the inside of this pack is pretty gigantic. Um, I have not finished off the seams here, but I will. Um, I'm a real stickler for finishing, especially canvas seams, because they fray really easily. So if you see that, don't be alarmed. Um, these will actually be finished off. And in fact, on this one you'll see these actually are finished off with wax canvas, as a matter of fact. So even my seams um, are finished off in wax canvas so that nothing will fray, everything stays super tight. Um, so a couple features that are built into all my packs. Um, anywhere where there's leather that, attached to the that attaches to the canvas, there's leather on the back side too. So, so here, for example, are the straps um, that are both. So this is actually a new feature on this, this pack. Um, and even on the latest version of this pack, is um, now these um, these tabs, the straps, actually sewing these onto the pack, and then they're riveted with two rivets, and then on the back side, there's a matching piece of leather. And everywhere there's a piece of leather on the front, there's a piece of leather on the back. And um, they actually even go to the extra step of dyeing these um, and waxing them. So these are dyed and waxed, both the front and the back. And I don't think you're going to find that on a lot of packs. A lot of times the, 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 the pieces of leather, if there are pieces of leather on the back side, um, they're not the same color, um, they're not finished off, but these are, you know, I, these are rounded edges and these are, these are literally exact copies and they're meant to go together. And so when I put these on here, I actually hold these up to a light <laughs> and I put adhesive on here so that they match up perfectly and then they're sewn on. Um, and then anywhere where there's a lot of strain, so like on the handle, it's riveted. So here's the back side of the handle. The straps, okay, so these straps, I have to say, these straps are awesome. So I hiked about 45 minutes in here with all this junk, including this giant pack. And so these straps are um, the same six, seven veg tan leather that everything else is on the pack. Um, but then they are finished off with this buckskin. And let me tell you what, man, this stuff is great. It's super soft, super durable. Of course, it looks awesome. At least I think it looks awesome. And I put a whole bunch of padding in here. So the padding goes in and it wraps around and then I sew it down. So it gives it a kind of this nice puffy padded feel. Um, and this is, I mean, this is great. Boy, this felt really nice. Again, this was, this was a heavy, heavy pack and walking in here, it felt great. Um, all the buckles are solid brass buckles. These are also Buckle Guy. In case you couldn't tell, I love buckleguy.com. I can't say buckleguy.com, but I love buckleguy.com. So these are solid brass, and these are a new feature on the Meandering Maker packs. These are rollers. So just a nice little extra feature. This makes it a little bit easier to get, to get it through there. And then, of course, these are also riveted back and front to the pack and the tabs that the straps attach to are double layer of wax canvas obviously there's a lot of st stress there so double layered and then double stitched into the seam of the pack the pad the uh what are these called these are straps these straps are riveted in as well um, so they're actually riveted twice so these two diagonal rivets here these are the two rivets for each of the straps. And then there's a piece of leather that is strapped, that is riveted over top of those um, to keep them uh, off your back and to keep them held in place. And all of that then goes through another piece of leather, if you can see here, that is sewn to the pack. And all of that then goes through 
a third piece of leather. So the straps, by the time you get from the protective leather to the strap to the first piece of leather and another, there's four pieces of leather and wax canvas all holding these straps to this pack, which is why you can trust that however much stuff you put in it, it's going to hold strong. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about this pack? Um, I think that's it. I will do some close-ups that I'm sure you will have seen while I'm talking. <laughs> Um, and, uh, let's see, I think that's mostly it. I think uh, one thing I actually do want to call your attention to, um, that I do that I haven't, I haven't seen this on other wax canvas bags. It's possible that it's out there. It's entirely possible, but I haven't seen it. So, um, so this edging, this is called binding, right? So, um, you have to do this on wax canvas because if you've ever seen wax canvas, um, or if you used it, raw itch it it uh frays and this is really thick wax canvas this is 15 ounce wax canvas so the threads are really big so if you pull one thread it's i mean it's a huge amount of material that comes off so that can't happen you have to bind it but mostly um what you see when these when canvas bags are bound is cotton twill or even a nylon binding and just kind of sewed on there that's fine um, but what I use is actually a lighter 10 ounce wax canvas, which is what um, this stuff sack is made out of and what my my axe my axe bag is made of. So it's a little bit lighter, but still thick wax canvas, and I create binding out of that. So what that means is that, um, and this is actually double folded over, so there's actually four layers of wax canvas on either side, or two layers on either side of the actual pack. So five layers of canvas on the edges, and then it's stitched all the way around, and that's on every edge. So that's on this big flap, and on the flaps for the side pockets, and for the uh, the flaps for side pockets, and the side pockets themselves. Even this little envelope pocket here. Um, so that's just a little extra touch, you know. Again, I, I'm just I'm a real stickler for finished edges. Um, I think it looks great, and it is just it's strong as hell so I gotta tell you I am psyched about this pack um, I've gotten a lot of really positive feedback on Instagram um, so thank you very much and for those of you who have expressed interest in this pack or even place an order for this pack um, I really appreciate it. I'm really excited to make these for you guys um, I can't wait to see these in action and see what people do um, obviously I want feedback um, this is a constant process. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you might see that I'm always testing, I'm always trying new things, I'm always trying new sewing techniques, I'm always trying new designs, and this is an iterative process. It's always ongoing, so um, nothing is ever done. So if you've got, if you get one of these and you have some ideas, or you see this and you have some ideas, um, like I say, I've gotten lots of great ideas already um, for some upgrades and some additional things, let me know. Um, you know, people who use these kind of packs all the time, um, you know, you know what they're all about and you know what you like and what you don't like. So, so anyway, all that said, um, this is the Meandering Maker three day pack. This is my newest pack. Um, oh, just quick dimensions, sorry. It is 20 inches tall. It is six inches wide and it is 12 inches across, which for me at five, six and a half, about 200 pounds was perfect for me. It sits right at the top of my shoulders. It goes all the way down to my waist and then this kind of hangs down below um, and just wide enough. Now, um, I think I'm gonna stop here and the next pack I make is gonna be a smaller one, probably a haversack, um, kind of an over the shoulder kind of deal. Um, but I will at some point make a wider, almost canoe pack kind of style, you know, really, really big. But for now, I feel like this is a really good, beefy, roomy pack that's comfortable, um, it's got tons of room, and um, should really serve you really well in the woods for a few days, um, especially if you don't carry with you a whole second pack. You probably don't need to do that. So there you go, Meandering Maker three-day pack in the books. That's not a good way to end this. Let's try this again. So there you go, Meandering Maker 3-Day Pack. Really excited about this pack, looking forward to feedback, and uh, let me know what you think.